Bienvenidos al curso de inglés definitivo de Vaughan. Lección 7. Nivel avanzado. Gimnasia verbal. El tercer condicional. It's time now to look at the third... Oh, hello, I haven't even said hello to you. How are you? Fine, thanks. Good. It's time now to look at the third <laughs> conditional. Okay. We've looked at the first and the second, the future conditional and the present conditional. We're now going to look at the conditional in the past. Uh, before we do this, I'm just going to run through the other two conditionals, okay? How would you say, for example, si se te lo diré? If I know, I will tell you. If I know... I will tell you. We're talking about the future here. If I know, I will tell you. But we take one step back into the past and we use the present simple if after if. If I know, we never say if I will know. Okay? Okay. How about si supiera, te lo diría. If I knew, I would tell you. If I knew, I would tell you. Okay. Now we're talking about the present, but we don't use the present after if. We use the past simple. Mm. One step back into the past. It's also one step back from the first conditional. If I know becomes if I knew. I will tell you the past of will is would. Would. So again, one step back into the past. Now we're going to look at the third conditional. Si hubiera sabido, te lo habría dicho. If I had known, I would have told you. If I had known, I would have told you. Again, we're talking about the past, but we don't use the past. Simple. Mm -hmm. After if, we use the past of the past or the past perfect. Okay. okay. So instead of if I knew, if I had known, the past of would is would have. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I had known, I would have told you. When do we use the past conditional, the third conditional? We use it when we are creating an alternative past. For example, in reality, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. That's the real past. But if I had known, I would have told you. Yeah. So I'm creating a, a fictitious past. It's really easier. Mm -hmm. Let's practice then. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really easy. It becomes easier and easier the more you practice. Okie dokie. Let's go with a few examples then. Si me hubiese acordado, te habría llamado. If I had remembered, I would have phoned you. Okay, try to say would have much faster. I would have. Would have. Well, I would have phoned you. Again? I would have phoned you. Muy bien. Si ella hubiera perdido su pasaporte... Habría ido al consulado británico, the British consulate, we say. If she had lost her passport, she would have gone to the British consulate. Good, she would have gone. Todo junto, ¿eh? ¿Otra vez? She would have gone. She would have gone. She would have. She would have gone. Would have. Would have. Would, would have. have gone. Again? Would have gone to the British consulate. Good, si hubiese llovido ayer, nos habríamos quedado en casa. If it had rained yesterday, we would have stayed at home. Would have stayed at home. Again. Would have stayed at home. Mucho mejor. Si la reunión hubiera sido cancelada, me habría ido a casa. If the meeting had been cancelled, 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 mm -hmm. I would have gone home. Good. I would have gone home. Más rápido. I would have gone home. Again. I would have gone home. Good. Cambiamos. Si mi gato hubiera desaparecido, yo habría ido a casa de los vecinos para buscarlo. If my cat had disappeared, I would have gone to the neighbor's house to look for it. Si me lo hubiese dicho, lo habría sabido. If you had told me, I would have known. Let's try now looking at a few examples in which we invert the two clauses, las dos oraciones. This time we're not going to start with the if clause. Pero da igual, lo que sigue a if siempre va a ser lo mismo. Siempre va a ser el pasado perfecto, ¿vale? Vale. Bien, ella habría estado de acuerdo si hubieras insistido. Por ejemplo, sería She would have agreed if you had insisted. Okay? Don't forget the golden rule. We never, ever, 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 ever say will after if. We never say would after if. We never say would have after if in a conditional clause. Okay? Okay. Siempre van en la otra parte. Vale. Vale. Okay, habrían parado si tuvieses quejado. They would have stopped If you had complained. Good. La empresa habría ganado más dinero si hubieras trabajado más duro. The company would have made more money. Money, no money. Mo money. Money. Vale, todo de nuevo. The company would have made more money Good. if you had worked worked harder. Eso es, worked. Don't forget that T sound at the end. Good. Okay, don't forget, in English, there are three different ways of saying to ganar, to, to ganar, that sounds good, doesn't it? To ganar dinero. <laughs> We can say to make money, which is what companies do, or what you do if you make a private investment. You earn money in your job, that's your salary, and you can win money, 
You win money on the lottery if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. Habrías conseguido el trabajo si hubieses estudiado inglés seriamente. You would have got the job if you had studied English properly. Okay, you're emphasizing have. You say you would have got the job. Say you would have. You would have. You would have. Emphasizing you would, have. would. Again, you would have got the job if you'd studied English properly. You would have got the job if you had studied English properly. Okay, lo habría comprado si hubiera tenido dinero conmigo. In English, we say to have money on you, not with you. Okay. I would have bought it if I had had some money on me. Good. Let's look at some examples in the negative now. Annie, you can start with the Spanish. No me habría acordado si no me lo hubieses recordado. I wouldn't have remembered if you hadn't reminded me. No habrían ganado si Ronaldo no hubiese estado lesionado. They wouldn't have won if Ronaldo hadn't been injured. Ella no habría conseguido el trabajo si no hubiese aprobado el examen de inglés. She wouldn't have got the job if she hadn't passed the English exam. Yo no habría dejado una propina si el servicio hubiera sido malo. I wouldn't have left a tip if the service had been bad. Let's turn the two phrases round and start with some examples with if this time. Si hubiese nevado, no habríamos ido. If it had snowed, we wouldn't have gone by car. If it had snowed, not snowed, okay? Si hubiese sido más caro, yo no lo habría comprado. If it had been more expensive, I wouldn't have bought it. I wouldn't have bought it. La B más fuerte en bought. Siempre dice bought, okay? Bought. 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 Again. Bought. Eso es. Apretando los labios. De acuerdo. De acuerdo? Venga. Si no hubieras tirado la cerilla, el incendio no habría empezado. If you hadn't thrown away the match, the fire wouldn't have started. Good. Si ella hubiera sido fiel, él no lo habría dejado. If she had been faithful, he wouldn't have left her. Good. Faithful. Muy bien. Some examples now in the interrogative. ¿Lo habrías comido si hubieras sabido que era carne de caballo? Horse meat, we say. Would you have eaten it if you had known it was horse meat? Good. ¿Se habrían conocido si no les hubieras presentado? Would they have met if you hadn't introduced them? Good. Introduced and not presented them. We introduce a person. Yeah? Let mm -hmm. me introduce you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll introduce you to my wife. Okay? Okay. Good. Ella habría dejado de fumar si hubiese sabido los peligros. Would she have given up smoking if she had known about the dangers? Muy bien. Te toca a ti. ¿Habrías firmado el contrato si hubieras leído la letra pequeña? Would you have signed the contract if you had read the small print? ¿Habrían ganado si se hubiesen entrenado más? Would they have won if they had trained harder? Si hubieras hecho un esfuerzo, ¿habrías ganado? If you had made an effort... Would you have won? Si ella hubiera leído el libro, ¿habría sabido la respuesta? If she had read the book, would she have known the answer? Si hubieras jugado, ¿habría ganado tu equipo? If you had played, would your team have won? Si hubiera nevado, ¿habrías jugado en la nieve? If it had snowed, would you have played in the snow? If it had snowed, no, snowed, okay? Si hubiera sido importante, ¿me lo habrías dicho? If it had been important, would you have told me? Fantastic! I told you it wasn't that difficult, Annie. No, I know. Okay, good. La expresión de la semana. To go blank. To go blank means quedarse en blanco. Okay. Blank, of course, must originate from the word blanc in French or blanco from the Spanish. It's exactly the same. To go blank. But we spell it B-L-A-N-K. Okay, to go blank. I go blank every day. I went blank yesterday. Let's have a look at some examples then. Cuando me levanté para hablar, me quedé en blanco. When I got up to talk, my mind went blank. Siempre me quedo en blanco cuando tengo que hablar en público. My mind always goes blank when I have to speak in public. Of course, we can also say, I always go blank. My mind or I es lo mismo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me quedé en blanco durante el examen. During the exam, I went blank. Espero no quedarme en blanco durante la entrevista. I hope I don't go blank during the interview. La periodista hizo tres preguntas y entonces parece que se quedó en blanco. The journalist. 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 Mm -hmm. Made three questions and... Ma made three questions? Or asked. 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 Mejor, ¿eh? We don't say to make a question. Okay. Can I make a question? Pues, <laughs> ni se te ocurra. No, can I ask a question? Okay. Okay. The journalist... Journalist. 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 Again. The journalist... <laughs> Not made. Asked. Okay, the journalist asked three questions. The journalist asked three questions and then she seemed to go blank. Muy bien. A la mitad de la obra de teatro, el actor protagonista se quedó en blanco. A la mitad de la obra de teatro sería halfway through the play. Okay? Okay. Halfway through the play, the actor who played the main character went blank. Okay, good. Me he quedado en blanco. My man has gone blank. Sí. 
My mind has gone blank. Good. Gimnasia verbal. Whose? Whose is the equivalent of cuyo. Now, cuyo is not a word which you use very much in Spanish, not in everyday Spanish. We use whose a lot in English, and that's probably why many Spaniards have problems when they come to use this word, okay? Mm -hmm. um, whose is spelled W-H-O-S-E. Y se, se pronuncia exactamente igual que who is, la contracción de who is. Whose. Whose. Okay, whose. Let's have a look at a few examples then. El hombre cuyo perro está ladrando es mi tío. The man whose dog is barking is my uncle. Okay, I'll give you one more. Jenny, cuya madre no está bien, no podrá estar en la fiesta. Jenny, whose mother isn't well, won't be able to make it to the party. Okay, to make it is a really common expression, by the way. I can't, I can't make it to the meeting. Mm -hmm. No puedo ir. I can't make it. Can you make it tonight? Puedes esta noche. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one. La persona cuyo teléfono está sonando. No está en su mesa de trabajo ahora mismo. The person whose phone is ringing isn't at their desk right now. Good, the person whose phone is ringing. Good. Los padres cuyos niños participaron en la función se sentaron en la primera fila. The front row, okay? Okay. The parents whose children took part in the show sat in the front row. Good, I'm glad you used to take part. It's much, much more common to use to take part than... To participate. You yeah. take part in something, okay? Good. The next one. Mi amigo cuyo tío es un ministro en el gabinete quiere entrar en la política. My friend whose uncle is a cabinet. Cabinet minister. Mm -hmm. My friend whose uncle is a cabinet minister wants to go into politics. Into politics, not politics. 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 Good. La empresa cuyas acciones cayeron en picado la lleva mi tía. So... Acciones are shares, mm -hmm. y caer en picado is to plummet. It's a regular verb, so plummet, plummet plummeted, okay? The companies whose shares plummeted. The company whose? Hmm? The company whose shares plummeted is run by my aunt. Good, it's run by my aunt. La lleva mi tía. It's run by my aunt. Good, cambiamos. La novela cuyo autor es francés se ha traducido a 15 idiomas distintos. The novel whose author is French, has been translated into 15 different languages. El periódico, cuyos lectores son en su mayoría votantes conservadores, ya vende más ejemplares que su principal competidor. The newspaper, whose readers are mainly conservative voters, now outsells its main rival. To outsell is vender más que, okay? Okay. Good. El coche, cuya rueda delantera se cayó, fue siniestro total. The car, whose front wheel came off, was a complete write-off. Good, the next one. El perro, cuyo dueño olvidó atarlo mientras estaba en la tienda, se fue corriendo y fue atropellado. The dog, whose owner forgot to tie it up while he was in the shop, ran off and got run over. Poor thing. Mm. Phrasal verb, to shake off. To shake off is a verb which means deshacerse de alguien. Qué feo. Qué feo, ¿verdad? O des deshacerse de algo también, like cold. Mm. You can shake off a cold. Or you can shake off someone who is annoying you. Let's have a look then. Don't forget that the verb to shake in itself is more complex because of the fact that it's irregular. Mm -hmm. We say to shake. Yesterday I shook and recently I have shaken. All right then. Annie, can you read the, a few examples in Spanish and then we'll switch over. Logré deshacerme del investigador privado cuando entré en el metro. I managed to shake off the private investigator when I went into the metro. La actriz se deshizo del reportero al entrar en un taxi. The actress shook off the reporter by getting into a taxi. No logro quitarme de encima este resfriado. I can't seem to shake off this cold. Si no me he quitado de encima esta gripe antes de la semana que viene, voy a ir al médico. If I haven't shaken off this flu by next week, I'm going to go to the doctors. ¿Cómo puedo quitarme de encima este dolor de cabeza? How can I shake off this headache? Good, headache, muy bien pronunciado. How can I shake off this headache? ¿Por qué ella no puede salir de su depresión? Why can she shake off her depression? Muy bien. Vocabulario. Okay, we're going to look at eight new words now, one of which is to pretend, which means... Fingir. Fingir y no pretender. To, uh, pretender, in English, we would say to claim. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, right. fingir is to pretend. Tiny. Muy pequeño. Diminuto. Muy bien. Tiny. A tiny little dog, etc., etc. To miss... Echar de menos. Good. To scratch. Rascar, arañar. A scar. Cicatriz. Selfish, egoísta, shellfish, mariscos, and miracle. Milagro. 
Good. Let's go through some examples then. Solo fingía no oírte. I was only pretending not to hear you. Good. El cachorro que me regalaron era muy pequeño. The puppy I was given was really tiny. Tiny. Muy bien. Se pronuncia tiny, no teeny. Mm -hmm. Se escribe teeny, pero hay mucha gente lo dice así. Muchos españoles. <laughs> pero es incorrecto. Deberíamos decir tiny, ¿ok? Él echa mucho de menos a sus amigos. He really misses his friends. Good. Mi perro se rasca sin parar cuando tiene pulgas. My dog scratches himself non-stop when he has fleas. Good. To do something non-stop is hacer algo sin parar. Mm -hmm. Non-stop. Good. Cada vez que llueve, ella se rasca la cicatriz. Every time it rains, she scratches her scar. She scratches her scar. Muy bien. Nunca compartes nada. Eres muy egoísta. You never share anything. You are very selfish. You're very selfish. Muy bien. Cambiamos. Me encanta comer mariscos acompañados de vino blanco. I love eating shellfish washed down with some white wine. Be careful with the difference between shellfish mariscos and selfish Egoísta, ¿ok? Bien, el siguiente. Es un milagro que hayas aprobado todos tus exámenes. It's a miracle you've passed all your exams. Gimnasia verbal. Not as much as. Y less than. We're now going to look at two different ways of saying the same thing. For example, I don't have as much money as my boss. Or, I have less money than my boss. We're talking about uncountable nouns here, money. Money no se cuenta, gramaticalmente hablando, ¿vale? What we're going to do then is the following. I'm going to read you a sentence in English with less than, mm -hmm. and I'd like you to say exactly the same thing, but using the negative, not as much as, okay? Okay. All right. I eat less food than I used to. I don't eat as much food as I used to. Good. She has less free time than her husband. She doesn't have as much free time as her husband. I want you to cut less hair than the last time. I don't want you to cut as much hair as the last time. Good. Developing countries cause less pollution than developed ones. Developing countries don't cause as much pollution as developed ones. Developed ones. Developed. Developed ones. The verb to develop doesn't end in a T or a D or a T-E or D-E. Which means that when you pronounce the past as, as it's a regular verb, we say developed. Y nunca developed. Okay. ¿Vale? Okay, pollution is another example of an uncountable noun. Por eso estamos utilizando as much as. Bien. The new neighbors make less noise than the previous ones. The new neighbors don't make as much noise as the previous ones. Good. The Portuguese produce less wine than the Spanish. The Portuguese don't produce as much wine as the Spanish. Good, the Portuguese. Ch, the Portuguese. Portuguese. Good. Okay, we're now going to do exactly the same exercise, but the other way round. So I will give you a sentence with as much as, and I want you to say exactly the same thing using less than. All right. Okay, I don't have as much time as I need. I have less time than I need. Good. There isn't as much nitrogen as oxygen in the air. There is less nitrogen than oxygen in the air. Good. He won't play as much rugby as football at school. He'll play less rugby than football at school. You don't do as much homework as you should. You do less homework than you should. ¿Cómo se dice cicatriz? Scar. Scar. Good. Empezando con este sonido de la S. Muy bien. I didn't make as much money as you did on that investment. I made less money than you did on that investment. Good. He didn't cause as much trouble as his friend did. He caused less trouble than his friend did. Good. ¿Cómo se dice diminuto? Tiny. Tiny. Muy bien. Okay, let's carry on. Don't add as much salt as pepper. Add less salt than pepper. Why don't you listen to as much classical music as pop music? Why do you listen to less classical music than pop music? Nobody eats as much rice as the Chinese. So you need to start your sentence with everybody. Everybody eats less rice than the Chinese. Good. She doesn't know as much vocabulary as her brother. She knows less vocabulary than her brother. Good. Repaso de la entrega anterior. La clave del éxito. El segundo condicional, para empezar. ¿Cortarías el césped si fuese demasiado largo? Would you cut the grass if it were too long? Si ganara más dinero, me compraría un coche más potente. If I earned more money, I would buy a more powerful car. Despite and in spite of. A pesar de que mi equipo era el favorito, el equipo de mi hermano ganó el partido. 
In spite of the fact that my team was the favorite, my brother's team won the match. A pesar del tiempo, fuimos al partido. Despite the weather, we went to the match to make a killing. ¿Cuál es la mejor manera de forrarse? What's the best way to make a killing? Verbos irregulares. Barrieron todas las calles antes del amanecer. They swept all the streets before sunrise. He sacado 200 euros, eso bastará. I've withdrawn 200 euros. That will be enough. Phrasal verb. Llegaremos a limpiar el garaje pronto. We'll get around to tidying the garage soon. En vez de. No podemos quedarnos en casa en vez de salir. Can't we stay in rather than going out? Vocabulary. No le hagas cosquillas a él, no le gusta. Don't tickle him, he doesn't like it. La probabilidad de que te toque la lotería es casi cero. The likelihood of winning the lottery is virtually zero. Verbos irregulares. Okay, we're going to look at five more verbs now, starting with to bite, which means, Annie? Morder. Morder, good. To freeze. Helar. To flee. Huir. To read. Leer. And to write. Escribir. And, of course, the most important thing is the fact that we're going to just work and work and work and work at them, okay? Until you gain a, just an absolutely unbelievable agility in using these verbs. All right. Okay, let's start with the first one. El perro me mordió el dedo dos veces la semana pasada, pero no me ha mordido esta semana. Qué suerte. The dog bit my finger twice last week, but it hasn't bitten me this week. Good, bitten, muy bien. Congelé muchas cosas el mes pasado, pero no he congelado nada este mes. Te estoy desvelando todos los secretos de mi vida personal, ¿eh? <laughs> todos. I froze lots of things last month, but I haven't frozen anything this month. Good. Cuando llegó la policía, el ladrón huyó de la escena del crimen. When the police arrived. When the police arrived. When arrive. the police, police arrived. Y no police. Police. Okay. When the police arrived, the rover fled the scene of the crime. The scene of the crime, not the scene, okay? The scene. Okay. It is not French. <laughs> <laughs> He leído 14 libros hasta la fecha este año, mientras que solo leí tres el año pasado. I've read 14 books so far this year, whereas last year I only read three. I've read 14 books so far this year, whereas last year I only read three. Very good. Aún no he leído lo que escribiste. I haven't read... Red, como el color. Okay. I haven't read what you wrote yet. Good. ¿Ya le has escrito a tu tía? Have you written to your aunt yet? Good. Nunca he huido de nada en mi vida. I've never fled from anything in my life. Good. Lo escribí en inglés, pero no lo escribí en español. I wrote it in English, but I didn't write it in Spanish. Good. Cambiamos. Leí la introducción, pero aún no he leído la novela. I read the introduction, but I haven't read the novel yet. Congelé los guisantes, pero aún no he congelado los calabacines. ¿En serio? En serio. Ok, I froze the peas, but I haven't frozen the courgettes yet. Me mordí la lengua, pero no me mordí el labio. I bit my tongue, but I didn't bite my lip. ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Egoísta? Selfish. Selfish. ¿Y mariscos? Selfish. Selfish, con H. Muy bien. ¿Te has mordido la lengua alguna vez? Have you ever bitten your tongue? Bitten. Again. Ok, have you ever bitten your tongue? Your tongue, good. ¿Has mordido a un mosquito alguna vez? Have you ever Bitten a mosquito. Good. Have you ever bitten a mosquito? Mosquito is one of the few words that comes from Spanish, which we use in English on a daily basis. A mm -hmm. mosquito. Good. Cambiamos. Los refugiados huyeron de su país. The refugees fled their country. Hoy no he leído el periódico. I haven't read the newspaper today. Escribí un largo artículo sobre el asunto. I wrote a long article about the matter. Casi se murió de frío. He nearly froze to death. El motor de mi coche se congeló. My car engine... ¿Por qué no lo has leído? Why haven't you read it? El perro mordió al gato que se dio la vuelta y huyó. The dog bit the cat which turned and fled. Congelé la cerveza sin querer. I froze the beer by mistake. I froze the beer by mistake. Okay, ¿cómo se dice mariscos? Selfish. Shellfish. Shellfish. ¿Y egoísta? Selfish. Selfish, sin la H, muy bien. Cambiamos. John lo escribió y James lo leyó. John wrote it and James read it. El huyó del país. He fled the country. El caballo me mordió la mano. The horse bit my hand. A continuación, escucharemos el párrafo de la semana. Hi, Eddie. How's it going? Where do you get all those jokes you send me by email? You must spend hours searching the internet for that stuff. You know, to tell you the truth, I'd almost prefer you didn't send me so many. I've got a lot of work to do. I don't have time to read them all, despite the temptation. Hi, Eddie. How's it going? Where do you get all those jokes you send me by email? You must spend hours searching the Internet for that stuff. You know, to tell you the truth, I'd almost prefer you didn't send me so many. 
I've got a lot of work to do, and I just don't have time to read them all, despite the temptation. Numeros, thousands, hundreds, and millions. We never tire of telling people that you don't add an S when you're talking about multiples of 100, multiples of 1,000, and multiples of a million. Yeah, 4 million, 5 million, 100, 300, 1,000, 8,000. We don't add an S. But there is one occasion when we do. Which occasion is that, Richard? Well, Annie, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> When we talk about cientos de, miles de, millones de, then we would say hundreds of people. Okay. Thousands of flies, millions of mosquitoes. Okay, añadiendo la S. Okay, well, there are always exceptions, aren't there? So let's go with a few examples then. Había cientos de personas en la cola sería, there were hundreds of people in the queue. Bien, el siguiente. Miles de personas estaban haciendo cola para conseguir entradas. Thousands of people were queuing to get tickets. Okay, to queue. To queue. Thousands of people were queuing, se pronuncia. Queuing. Queuing to get tickets. Muy bien. Cientos de personas se verán afectadas. So we would say, will be affected. Simplemente. Hundreds of people will be affected. Good. Millones de personas fuman en España. Millions of people smoke in Spain. Good. Hay millones de moscas en el aire esta noche. En el aire diríamos nosotros about. Okay. There are millions of flies about tonight. Good. Cambiamos. Él ganó miles de libras en la operación. He made thousands of pounds on the deal. Isabel Allende vende miles de libros cada año. Isabel Allende sells thousands of books every year. Ella tiene cientos de amigos. She has hundreds of friends. Millones de personas estaban sin luz anoche. Millions of people were without electricity last night. La luz, in the sense of electrical power, in English we would say electricity and not light. All right. Tengo cientos de cosas que hacer hoy. I've got hundreds of things to do today. Mi vecina ganó miles de libras en la lotería. My neighbor won thousands of pounds on the lottery. Repaso. El tercer condicional. Si no hubieras perdido tu tarjeta de crédito, no habríamos tenido que llamar al banco. If you hadn't lost your credit card, we wouldn't have had to phone the bank. Si ella lo hubiera sabido, no se habría casado. If she had known, she wouldn't have got married. Yo lo habría vendido si hubiera necesitado el dinero. I would have sold it if I had needed the money. ¿Cómo se dice fingir? To pretend. Good. ¿Habrías aprobado el examen si hubieses estudiado? Would you have passed the exam if you had studied? Whose? El hombre cuyo coche está aparcado allí es policía. The man whose car is parked there is a policeman. La mujer cuyo bolso fue robado fue hospitalizada. The woman whose handbag was stolen was hospitalized. ¿Cómo se dice milagro? Miracle. A miracle. It's a miracle you remembered. <laughs> And the next one. Augusto, cuyas hijas están de vacaciones, juega con ellas en la piscina todos los días. Augusto, whose daughters are on holiday, plays with them in the swimming pool every day. Vocabulario. Solo fingía no verte. I was only pretending not to see you. El gatito que me regalaron era muy pequeño. The kitten I was given was really tiny. Ella echa mucho de menos a su madre. She really misses her mother. Para de rascarte la nariz. Stop scratching your nose. Me hice esta cicatriz jugando al rugby. I got this scar playing rugby. Comer marisco a solas es muy egoísta. Eating shellfish alone is very selfish. Es un milagro. It's a miracle. ¿Cómo se dice que das en blanco? Te has quedado en blanco, ¿eh? You've gone blank. To go blank. <laughs> Good. Not as much as and less than. The new neighbors make less noise than the previous ones. Okay, I want you to say the same thing, but using as much as. All right. The new neighbors don't make as much noise as the previous ones. Good. The Portuguese produce less wine than the Spanish. The Portuguese don't produce as much wine as the Spanish. Good. Now the other way around. Nobody eats as much rice as the Chinese. And this everybody... Eats less rice than the Chinese. Everybody eats less rice than the Chinese. Muy bien. Why didn't she have as much luck as the winner? Why did she have less luck than the winner? Good. Irregular verbs. ¿Has congelado la cerveza sin querer alguna vez? Have you ever frozen beer by mistake? ¿Ya has escrito el informe? Have you written the report yet? He leído muchos libros esta semana. I've read a lot of books this week. Él huyó de la policía. He fled from the police. Expresión de la semana. Siempre me quedo en blanco en los momentos importantes. I always go blank when it matters. Ana se quedó en blanco en mitad de la reunión. Ana went blank in the middle of the meeting. Grand finale. 
Annie, you must be really excited right now because you know what's coming. <laughs> Grand、It's... finale. Exactly. This is when I put you to the test on everything we've looked at today, and we're going to go really, really fast. Okay. All right. Let's go then. Los Rolling Stones han vendido millones de discos. The Rolling Stones have sold millions of records. Good. ¿Cómo se dice echar de menos? To miss. To miss. Good. El equipo cuyo delantero fue a jugar a Inglaterra fichó a un jugador brasileño. To fichar is to sign. The team whose forward went to play in England signed a Brazilian player. Good. Hay cientos de gangas en nuestras rebajas de invierno. Gangas son bargains.、Eh? Bargains. There are hundreds of virgins in our winter sale. Hundreds of bargains. Bargains. L- bargains. Mejor. Lo habrías hecho si hubieras sabido que estaba prohibido. Would you have done it if you had known it was forbidden? Good. ¿Cómo se dice arañar? To a scratch. To a scratch or to scratch. 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 To scratch. Bien. Si si te pica, rascate. If it itches, scratch it. If it itches, scratch it. Muy bien. Si él hubiera hecho un esfuerzo, habría conseguido el trabajo. If he had made an effort, he would have got the job. Good. Why do we have less fun than we used to? Pues quiero que hagas la misma pregunta pero empleando as much as. Te lo repito si quieres. Why do we have less fun than we used to? Why don't we have as much fun as we used to? Good. El mismo ejercicio ahora. She wears less jewelry than my aunt. She doesn't wear as much jewelry as my aunt. Good. ¿Cómo se dice rascar? To scratch. To scratch, igual que arañar. To scratch. Muy bien. El político se quedó en blanco durante el discurso. The politician went blank during the speech. Good. ¿Cuál es la mejor manera de quitarme de encima este resfriado? What's the best way to shake off this cold? To shake off this cold, Annie. Fantastic. Well done. Bye. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you very much for listening, and see you all again next week. Don't forget to study, and when I say study, I mean every single day for at least twenty minutes. Okay? Okay. All right then. Bye bye. Ya habrás dedicado más de una hora a absorber nuevos aprendizajes en inglés. Lo más normal ahora es pensar que ya sabes las estructuras presentadas en el libro. No te engañes. Si no dedicas un mínimo de veinte minutos al día entre hoy y el domingo que viene para consolidar tus conocimientos, acabas de desperdiciar un tiempo muy valioso de tu vida. El éxito para aprender un idioma depende de solo una cosa: el esfuerzo continuo del alumno.